The changing balance of carbon between the soil and atmosphere can alter our climate. As plants remove carbon dioxide from the atmosphere during growth, microorganisms release carbon dioxide from dead and decomposing plant matter back to the atmosphere. It is this balance of carbon in the atmosphere that can influence climate change. To understand this balance, mathematical decomposition models help to describe how plant litter decomposes. These models represent carbon dynamics and predict how climate changes may affect carbon inputs to the atmosphere from plant litter decomposition. One of the earliest and simplest litter decomposition models was created by Olson. It started with the simplifying assumption that a constant fraction of decomposing plant litter carbon disappeared as carbon dioxide daily. Mathematically, the decomposition rate was defined as the change in amount of plant litter carbon over time, so that dc over dt equals k times c. A problem with Olson's model is that it did not consider the different chemical compounds in plant litter, which led to inaccurate estimates of decomposition. Paul and Juma addressed these limitations by keeping track of the three main types of chemical compounds in plant litter during decomposition, soluble materials, cellulose, and lignin. They used the same equation as Olson to describe the decomposition of each compound, but because each decomposes at a different rate, separate rate constants, or k-values, apply to each so that the decomposition of plant litter was the sum of decay rates for each of the three compounds. However, neither Olson nor Paul and Juma considered the formation of soil organic matter, which is mostly carbon, from plant litter. In response to the limitations of these earlier decomposition models, Parton and collaborators developed the Century Model to calculate transformations of plant litter compounds into soil organic carbon pools and carbon dioxide. However, like most decomposition models that came before it, the Century model still did not include the microorganisms responsible for decomposition. When decomposer microorganisms die, the plant litter carbon they once consumed now becomes part of the soil organic carbon pool, but previous models did not explicitly track these microbial transformations of plant litter carbon. To address this emission, Schimmel and Weintraub created a new mathematical model to describe plant litter decomposition through the actions of microbial enzymes. Microbes use carbon and energy from soil organic matter to produce enzymes, which, in turn, break down plant litter. In this model, the decomposition rate is estimated as a constant fraction of decomposing plant litter carbon, multiplied by the amount of microbial digestive enzymes, which is divided by the amount of enzymes, plus the enzyme concentration required to achieve half the maximum decomposition rate. The major limitation of the Schimmel and Weintraub model is that it only has one pool of plant litter, like Olson. Imold expanded the Schimmel and Weintraub model to include the three major types of plant chemical compounds, much like Paul and Juma expanded the Olson model. In this model, plant litter decay is estimated as the sum of decomposition of the three major plant litter pools, where I equals 1 through 3. These models, from Olson to Imold, include various levels of mathematical realism. Increased realism requires greater complexity, computing power, and knowledge, but provides more insight to underlying processes responsible for decomposition, and better predictions under new and varied conditions like climate change.